But some um, of the information that would help protect the public safety can be provided in a way that doesn't compromise a criminal investigation, especially when you're reporting on aggregate data, which is sometimes useful mm -hmm. and can help to identify exactly where those fault lines are in Maine that might help keep, keep kids safe. And so that's one of the ways that those that balance can be reached in order to, to, to not compromise a very important ongoing criminal prosecution, mm -hmm. but release enough information to help learn what went wrong in that case and might have kept that child safe. And actually, Beth Ashcroft, the director of Opega, told me on camera, I didn't include it in that bite, I should have now, I realized. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, you know, we have more information that we might be able to release that right. we chose not to because we want, we do not want to paint a picture that helps people make false assumptions. Is that yeah, the right, right mentality? Well, yeah, I mean, you get a little piece of the puzzle and people jump all over that and think that that's the problem. That's really not fair, and it doesn't result in productive remedies. Um, so, yeah, you do need to look at the whole picture. Um, it how long did it take OPEGA to do the main turnpike authority analysis? Like six or eight, ten months? I don't know. Right. But when they ultimately did, it was very comprehensive. It, just the amount of documentation they go over in this kind of case is pretty massive. And then to get the expertise of different people about what could have, should have happened, that kind of thing. We want to give you all a chance yeah. uh, to give some final thoughts. You know, looking forward for you as significant players in this situation, what's on the top of your mind? What's your top priority going forward as far as making change to make our state better to protect more children? Do you want a political speech now? <laughs> <laughs> this is not AD. a gubernatorial <laughs> debate. I know. Not. Roll the tape from last <laughs> month. Yes, right. Right. <laughs> We're talking specifically, okay. though, protecting Maine's children. You know, where's your priority? Whoever wants to go first can go first. We didn't talk about public health nursing. I think that's an important thing. It's been debated in the legislature in the last year, a um, very important part of, of what needs to happen to protect infants, whether it's drug-affected babies, whether it's babies in compromised situations or young children who are not getting the services they need. The public health infrastructure needs to be restored. Uh, we went from 50-something public health nurses to around 12 or 15, and now the bill passed the legislature um, last year uh, and to be implemented this year is supposed to bring those numbers up because I want to make sure that every doctor, every medical professional who refers a new child, a baby to a family, nur fam family nurse practitioner or a nurse, visiting nurse gets that service and gets it and it's accountable to the medical practitioner. So that's an important piece of the puzzle here. Lowering the infant mortality rate, educating people about co-sleeping, and obviously the opioid epidemic, is serious, serious matters to be addressed by the legislature and by all of us as communities in this state. Ms. Hartfeld, in your final thoughts, I want to hear, sure. you are the one who brings the national perspective here. You know, that's your expertise. How does Maine stack up and what can we do going forward? So. I would like to see the federal government invest significantly more dollars in every state across the country to help keep kids safe and at home when possible and to support vulnerable families. So that's sort of my number one priority as somebody who's inside the Beltway Loop um, trying to advocate on this issue federally. In terms of what Maine can do, as many other states, the number one most effective evidence-based practice that's been demonstrated to, to prevent child fatalities from abuse and neglect is home visiting. So as, as every state across the country, I would hope that every child and family who would benefit from home visiting in Maine is able to receive home visiting services. Um, number two, I would hope that Maine would consider to change its hotline screening procedures to make sure that the most vulnerable and youngest children actually have eyes of a trained social worker on them to make sure they're safe within a very short period of time and that those cases cannot be screened out. Um, and thirdly, I would say that Maine should be held accountable for every federal dollar that it does receive, just like every other state, and that all of the promises it makes to the federal government about how they're spending those dollars should have integrity, and that every state, including Maine, should be held accountable for how those dollars are being spent, or else it's hard for people like me to fight for more investments. Thank Mr. you. Hardly. So I have a son that's 35 and had his first child, and, and Dev was born six weeks early, and they live in another state, and they got home visitors. And my son's um, working on his PhD. His wife is a uh, uh, has an M um, master's, very educated, and they were so willing and excited that they were going to be able to get services in their home to support them. Um, they weren't threatened by the system. I think because of their their own confidence, 
they were able to do that and they're better parents because of it. We need to create an environment where we recognize it is tough being a parent and it's even tougher when you don't know if you've got food, if you've got housing and you don't have natural supports. We need, really need to recognize that. I've been in this for a long time and there's always these shows after deaths. There's always new laws. There's always hopefully new funding. But then it dies down and people aren't paying attention. Children, especially in Maine at this point in time where our demographics are working against us, we should value every child even more um, and, uh, and support families in that way. Um, and so I'm hopeful that what comes from OPEGA is not who did something wrong, but maybe all the good things that we've done and to build on that and not, and maybe hopefully this is an aberration. Uh, but I think the public, has a right to know whether it is or whether there's fundamental issues that need to be worked on and, and changed. Ms. Mayhew. I think the panel here reflects a deep commitment in this state to making sure that our children are protected and that the fundamental role of government is fulfilled in making sure that children are protected from abuse and neglect. And there has been a considerable effort over many years to make sure that those resources are in place, but we've got to constantly be vigilant to make sure that the systems are in fact there to support our children. But we also need to take a look at prevention and opportunities to invest in parenting education, uh, to support our youth. Uh, you know, I I'd, I'd identify jobs for Maine graduates and, and their work at helping to break the cycle and help kids who can become strong, independent adults mm -hmm. that will make better parents, that will have stable families, be involved in their communities. We all want uh, children and families to live successful lives and we need to be careful about thinking that there is some government solution or answer. At the end of the day, when people are able to live independently and productively, that's what's in the best interest for all of us and children can be raised in healthy, loving environments. Yeah. Thank you all so much for being here and that's kind of the goal Thank of this you. at the end of the day is again, not to point fingers, but hopefully inspire some meaningful change. And we hope that this conversation, you know, will continue to our viewers and to anyone who might see this and keep that conversation going. Mm -hmm.